Hey, what's up guys? So I am a real sucker for these typewriter animations. Um, you've probably seen these before on people's portfolios or on different landing pages. Sometimes I'll have a little blinking cursor at the end and they're pretty cool. I think that they give you a solid way to kind of add a bunch of different information into a condensed space and they just kind of add a little professionalism to a website sometimes. Um, I'd never actually put one of these together until I started making this video and I looked around a bit and saw how different people were doing it. And some of them were good, some of them I thought were not the greatest, so I kind of figured out my own way, which I think is pretty simple. Uh, this probably shouldn't take more than 10 or 15 minutes to really put this together for yourself. Um, yeah, so anyways, just wanted to share with you guys how I do that. For reference, it's going to look something like this. Uh, you can obviously make it look like whatever you want, all that we really care about is this part right here. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. To start off here, all that I really have is a blank slate. So this is just like a base HTML page. All that I've added is like a little bit of base styling, so remove some padding, remove some margin, stuff like that. Um, and you'll see that all we have here is a blank space. I'll keep this other stuff open just as reference so we can kind of check back and forth. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll just kind of start with a blank slate and we'll go ahead and add some text. So I'm gonna come down into our body here and I'm just gonna add, say an H1, doesn't really matter. We're just gonna have one piece of text in here and we'll do the same thing I did for the other one. So I think it was something like, hey, I'm Tom. I had the little wavy emoji. I'm just gonna copy that because I don't know a better way to add that. Uh, we'll add a new line, so a break, something like that. And I think I did something like, I like, oops, I like to. And then I had our kind of magic stuff over here. So I had our little typewriter effect somewhere in here. The way that we're gonna do this um, is we're not actually gonna add anything directly into our HTML to start. What we're gonna do to start is just add a span tag like this. And this one is going to be <clears throat> where we use some JavaScript to actually type in our typewriter effect. We'll give it an ID equal to say typewriter. And then after that, we also want that little blinky cursor thing. So we'll make another span for that. So that is going to be, oops, there we go. Another span, I'm just gonna add a pipe. That's just like that little straight up and down thing. And that's what we're gonna use as our cursor. And I'm gonna give that an ID as well of cursor. Save that, put that all back on one line. So now we've got some text on two separate lines. One has an ID of typewriter, the other one has cursor. If I save that, we should now see, I'm gonna up this a little bit in size, that we have our text here. So, hey, I'm Tom, I like to, and then this is a little pipe thing. We can go ahead and add a little bit of styling to this to make this not look completely terrible. I'm not gonna go super deep on styling. You go however deep you want to. Um, but yeah, so let's just start with the body. We'll give it a height of 100 viewport height, just to fill the whole screen. I'm just gonna give it some padding instead of centering. So I'll say 150 pixels and maybe 75 pixels, something like that. I'm gonna give it a background color of like a slightly off-white. I'm just gonna copy the value that I used in the example so we get the same thing, something like that. And then I'm gonna give it a text align of center. So if I save that, now we have something that looks a little bit more like what we're going for. We just need to add a little bit more styling to this text. So I'm gonna come on down below this, target my H1, and we'll give this a font size of say 50 pixels, something like that. It's a little bigger. Zoom back out a little bit. And then we're gonna have some extra styling in a little bit for the typewriter stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and stub that out and then uh, we'll come back to it in a little bit. So we have an idea of typewriter. In a little bit, we're gonna have you know some styles here. What we can do really quick though, <clears throat> excuse me, is the little blinking animation for this guy. So I think that's probably a good start. It's just to get this guy kind of blinking back and forth. That's just some simple CSS animations that we can do in you know a couple of seconds here. So I'm gonna go ahead and target that. We'll say, what do we call it? Cursor, I think. Yep, ID of cursor. Target the cursor. We wanna make it that bluish color that we had in the other thing. So we'll go ahead and do that first. The color was this. Right, yep, that's our color. And then we're gonna have some kind of animation here. Uh, I'm gonna call it blink. We'll go ahead and write this in just a second, but to start, we'll call it blink. We'll say it takes one second. We want this to be a linear animation and we want it to run infinitely. So if we do that to start, obviously we're not gonna get anything yet because we haven't written this animation yet. So let's go ahead and do that. This is probably just about the simplest animation you could ever think to write. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the keyframes. We'll call it blink. And then what do we want to actually do here? Well, all that I care to do is just kind of take the opacity from 100% down to 0% and then back to 100%. That's it. You could also do something like hiding it and showing it so you get like a full on and off blink or 
you know, whatever. You can adjust this a little bit if you want. But for this use case, I'm just going to go with something simple like this. So we're going to start with something like 0%. And we're going to start with an opacity of 100% to start. Oops. All right. And then at 50%, so halfway through the animation, we want the opacity to be at 0%. If we go ahead and save that. There we go. Beautiful. We've got a little cursor. And it is as simple as that. That's all we really need to do here. Now, the next thing we want to do, though, is actually interject this kind of text before the cursor. Uh, while I'm up here, I guess I can go ahead and just add these styles to the typewriter. It's not, none of these styles actually really matter for the animation. I just kind of want to make it look a little bit better. Um, oh, did I miss an R there? Yes, typewriter. That would have been annoying. Typewriter. Then I'll also just do a font weight of bold to kind of make this pop out from the rest of the text a little bit. Cool, so this is it for our CSS. I'm gonna go ahead and close up the style tag. Okay, so point being, we are done with our styling up here. We can go ahead and close up our styling. I'm gonna come back down. We're entirely done with our HTML. All that we need now is our actual JavaScript. I'm saying all, but this should be the majority of what this tutorial is. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a script tag down here. You can also pull this out into a separate file if you want, or however you wanna do this is fine with you. For me, I'm just gonna keep it all in one file. So we have our script tag down here. The first thing I'm going to add is a kind of utility function. So to kind of just walk through the idea of how this is going to work is I'm going to have some kind of list of all of the different uh, kind of phrases or words that I want this to say. So in this case, it is coaching or podcast, and those are going to be in some kind of list. And then I'm going to iterate over that list. And for each of those words, I'm going to type them in kind of one character and then two characters and then three characters. And I'm going to have some function for pausing in between those. The way that I'm going to do that pausing is using async await, and I'm just going to have a kind of fake function, which is going to use set timeout uh, paired with a promise to let us define or to let us de to let us define exactly how long we want to wait between each of these kind of letters. So maybe we'll say 100 milliseconds between each letter, and then we'll type them in kind of one at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is just write that helper function. We can call it sleep. So we'll say function sleep. This function is gonna take in the number of milliseconds that we wanna sleep for. And all we're gonna do is return a new promise. If you don't know about promises, uh, go ahead and check that out on MDN or something. You don't really need to understand these super in depth. You could really honestly probably just follow this for the time being, you'll kind of see how this works. Um, so the first argument you're gonna to get to this function that you're gonna to pass to promise is resolve, which is a function to call whenever the promise is resolved. And then we're gonna pair that with set timeout. And we're going to say we want to run the resolve function after this number of milliseconds. So we can now, inside of an async function, call this, and it will wait for however many milliseconds we want it to wait for. Perfect. So that is literally all we need to do for our sleep function. Under our sleep function, I'm going to go ahead and define our list of phrases. So we'll say const phrases is equal to a list. In my last example, I think I had something like code. Uh, oops. Then I had something like make beats, and then I had something like hug puppies. So this is just things that I like to do. Um, and we'll, like I had said earlier, we're gonna iterate over these, and for each of these words, we're gonna type them in. So in this case, something like community, and then something like coaching, et cetera, et cetera. Cool, so after that, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this element just using get element by ID. Uh, just out of the page one time. And I'm just gonna do this here so that we can have a reference to this span tag and not have to pull another reference each time we want to reference it. So we'll go ahead and say const, we'll just call it element, is equal to document dot get element by ID. And the element that we want is the type writer. Make sure I wrote that correctly, type writer, beautiful. Now we can reference that element whenever we need it. Uh, before I actually write the kind of function to loop over all these words. I'm gonna go ahead and define just some other little helper variables. So we'll have like a kind of sleep time. This is the amount of time we wanna sleep between each letter. Uh, and we're, you're gonna see, we're gonna use this for a couple of other small things, but for right now, we're gonna call this 100. So that refers to 100 milliseconds. Um, under that, I'll go ahead and define one more, which this is going to be the current index for whichever word we want, which we wanna start at zero. So we're gonna start index zero for code, index one for make beats, and then index two for hug puppies. And then we're gonna have some extra logic to loop back to the beginning of phrases whenever we're done. So that looks good to me. Start with sleep time, and then we'll say, let's say cur phrase index, what I called it in my last example. 
And we're going to start that at zero and increment that as we go. And that's pretty much all that we need as far as the, the basic setup. Now we actually need the, the loop. So we're going to start with uh, just defining just a bare function. I'm going to call it right loop. And this is going to be an asynchronous function. We're not going to be making any HTTP calls or anything, but we need this to be an async function so that we can await the sleep function that I had written earlier. So we'll make an async function. For right now, we'll just do something like this. And then below that, we're going to call the function like this. I'm going to pop over here and just make sure nothing exploded, nothing weird in the console. Doesn't look like it. Awesome. So everything looks like it's, it's good up to now. Now we need to actually write this this right loop function. So there's kind of a couple of different ways that you could do this. You could use something like recursion. Um, but what I'm going to do, <coughs> sorry, what I'm going to do is just use a while loop and just have it run forever. So I'm going to go ahead and say while true. I want to do some kind of stuff. Be careful kind of saving right here because this might make your computer explode. Um, but yes, so we're going to go ahead and have a while loop. We're going to say while true. We want to, you know, do whatever kind of logic we want to do for writing in each of these words. The first kind of thing I want to do is actually get access to this first word here. So out of phrases, I want to get whichever one is at the current index that I'm at. So let's go ahead and do that. Say let cur word is equal to phrases at the cur phrase index. So the first time around, cur word is going to equal to code, then make beats, then hug puppies as we kind of increment. What I'm going to do really quick before we go any further is I'm just going to console log this out. And after I console log that out, I'm going to use our sleep function just to wait. So we can kind of see this in, in practice here. So we'll say a thousand milliseconds, we want to await sleep. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up our console. And we should see now that every second, six, seven, we're getting that word kind of logged out. So this is a good start. We're able to pull out our, our index and we have a loop which is gonna run forever, which we can just keep typing in and out our words. Perfect. So the first thing that we wanna do is actually type in this word. So you can kind of think of the steps. You probably wanna type your word in, then maybe you wanna pause at the end, then you wanna slowly remove the word, then maybe you wanna pause at the beginning and then go to the next word through your loop. So we can go ahead and do that. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do here to type in our word, we're just gonna make a normal for loop. So say for let i is equal to zero. Well, i is less than the current word's length. We want to just do a normal for loop, so i plus plus. So essentially what we're saying here is we wanna loop over every letter of the word. So while i is equal to zero, it's so essentially we have c, then we wanna type in co, then cod, then code. So here's how we're gonna go ahead and do that. We already have our reference to our element right here. So this is our typewriter span. All that we need to do is say element dot inner text, and we can set that equal to whatever we want. What we want to do is get some kind of chunk of cur word, right? So current word is just all of the word code as it's referenced, but usefully, <coughs> Usefully enough, we have this access to an index kind of pointer right here. So we can use that along with the substring method on a string to say that we want everything from the beginning of the string to I. Now there's a little bit of a problem. So if we go ahead and save this, we should see, okay, yeah. So this is just gonna run one time essentially. And it's gonna go so fast that you're only gonna see COD, but you'll see we're not getting CODE here. This is just like a little bit of an off by one error. So we can go ahead and say I plus one, oops plus one. Now we should save and see that we get all of C O D E. Now that's cool, but obviously we're not, you know, typing this in yet. So all that we have to do is use our sleep function, right? So I'm going to go ahead back to our sleep function. And instead of passing in a time directly, I'm going to pass in the sleep time, which we defined up here. This way we can adjust this easily. So now if I go ahead and save this, we should, Oh, I think I messed something up here. Did I add an extra bracket? Yep. There we go. Okay, so now we should see that we're getting this typing in. It's just kind of going in a loop and typing in over and over and we're not typing back out, but this is a good start. So we're saying C, C, O, C, O, D, C, O, D, E, and then we're going back to the beginning. Awesome. So after this, I actually do kind of want to keep this sleep here. So I want to type in a word and then I want to pause for some period of time before I remove it. Instead of typing in 1000 directly, I'm going to go ahead and base this off of our sleep time. We'll just say something like sleep time times 10 or something like that, which funny enough, we'll just turn back into a thousand, which is what I had written in manually. 
Uh, so yeah, you'll see that nothing will have changed as of now. After this though, what do we want to actually do? We pretty much want to do this exact same thing. We just want to do it kind of in reverse. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy our for loop here. And instead of setting I equal to zero, I'm gonna set I equal to cur word dot length and say, instead of well, I is less than cur word dot length, because obviously that will just not even run. We'll say I is greater than zero and do I minus minus. So now we're starting at the last letter of the word and we're typing back to nothing. Um, and the only one other difference here is instead of doing I plus one, we want to do I minus one so that we actually get that kind of downstepping effect. And if we go ahead and save this, we actually should now kind of get what we're looking for. So C O D E, and then it types back out. Awesome. Now that we have this, we could add one more kind of sleep after this to say, Hey, at the beginning, I also want you to pause. Uh, we'll go ahead and say five, something like that. So C O D E pause. Awesome. And now all we have to do is add a little bit of logic for actually switching words, right? So we want to go from code to whatever the next word was, make beats, then hug puppies, then back to code. So we'll go ahead and add that logic in down here. All that we have to do is kind of check that our current phrase index, so that index pointer that we have, uh, is essentially less than this index here. So if it's currently pointing at hug puppies, then we want to loop back to the beginning, else we just want to move it up by one which is relatively straightforward. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll say if current phrase index is equal to phrases dot length minus one. So if current phrase index is currently pointing at the very last item in the array, we'll go ahead and just say current phrase index is equal to zero else current phrase index plus plus. So we'll just add one to the current phrase index and that should pretty much be it. So now if we pop back over, Awesome, so we started with code, then we get make beats, then we get hug puppies, and then we should get back to code without this exploding. Nice, awesome. Anyways, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I hope this was helpful for you. If you actually need this code, I'll have a link for it in my GitHub in the description. Uh, like and subscribe if it was useful, all that good stuff, and I will see you next time. Peace.